Those goddamn health authority oligarchs will not give up their fucking power. They loved the spotlight over the past two years, and because monkeypox, you know, normally transmitted through sexually explicit means, means that you should probably be putting on a mask if you're traveling. Don't people, like, buy on, on trains and planes and automobiles and all that stuff? Don't they buy, like, their own individual seat and they don't have to sit in each other's lap naked? Like, shouldn't this all be avoided? Like, what the fuck is a mask gonna do for you when it comes to monkeypox, okay? Oh, well, maybe that's why uh, the CDC put out the, the warning, oh, you should wear a mask while you're traveling, and then they're like, oh, wait, no, nobody's just walking around a fly-by load in the face. It doesn't really happen all that much, unless, of course, you're on an NYC subway. Anyways, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention stuck their fucking disgusting feet in their mouth and raised its alert level for monkeypox to level two. Why? Again, the way that it's being transmitted is through a fucking close contact running, rubbing up against each other, okay? It doesn't fucking... How, how does a mask help? I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. Neither does the CDC, but they're the ones making all of the correct decisions. Uh, they moved it up to level two and recommended that people wear masks when traveling before appearing to make a U-turn on the advice. Yeah, no shit. No fucking shit. In an update, the government agency raised its alert level to two, whatever that is. Uh, it's, in it's in accordance with their IQ level, encouraging people to practice enhanced precaution measures such as avoiding contact with people visibly sick. Yeah, no shit. If they have that big fucking boils on their arm, I'm not exactly running up there to, you know, lick them to see how they taste. Okay, that seems a little, a little touch ridiculous. Why do you have to put out guidelines? Okay, don't be rubbing up against the big fucking pussy dude. We got it. We fucking figured it out on ourselves. Thanks for that. Okay, so avoid contact, uh, regularly washing their hands. Once again, who who hasn't been washing their hands, okay? Do people just scoop the shit out of their ass and then just fucking, I don't know, spit them clean or what? Is that what we're doing here? Oh, God. And wearing a face covering. Again, ah, maybe that's to uh, just further curtail just the overwhelmingly desire, the overwhelming desire to lick strangers in public places. Like, fucking Christ. Cases of monkeypox have been reported in Europe, North America, South America, Africa, Asia, and Australia. But what about Antarctica? Okay, we well, forget in another continent, you bunch of racists. Do you think penguins can get monkeypox? Is that where we're going here? Okay. Some cases were reported among men who have sex with men. Okay, cool. Well, wear your pride masks. Uh, some cases were also reported in people who live in the same household as an infected person. Wow, is it between uh, two romantically engaged partners? I wonder if there's a through line here. The health body on Monday cautioned travelers to avoid close contact with sick people, including those with skin or genital lesions. Oh, again, if you're out just traveling in public, how would a mask? Okay, again, how would a mask help if somebody has fucking bumps on their dick? I don't get it. I don't fucking get it as well as with dead or live wild animals such as small rodents and monkeys. Again, I, I, were these just like really attractive things to pick up and handle and fucking toss in the air and just spontaneously juggle beforehand? Ugh. Uh, travelers were also urged to avoid eating prepared meat uh, from wild game or using products such as creams and lotions derived from wild animals from Africa. How common is that shit? Okay, my god. Like, I understand salmonella recall from fucking air-chilled turkey or chicken breasts every once in a while, but if you're getting Jergens Deepest Darkest Africa blend, I think you're fine, okay? Let me shelve that cocoa butter for a minute. Avoid contact with com contaminated materials. That's just good advice to begin with. Uh, used by sick people. That's a racism. Uh, such as clothing, bedding, or materials used in healthcare settings. Yes, exactly. If you're thinking about clipping your nails, you should probably sterilize the product beforehand and not shove them up the ass of the itchy guy over there in the corner. That would be fine, okay? Finally, the CDC urged travelers to wear masks, noting that doing so can help protect you from many diseases, including monkeypox. Yes, exactly, because if you kiss through a mask, you can't get bumpy. It makes no sense. It's literally devoid of logic. However, the advice regarding mask wearing is no longer present on the CDC website as of June 7th, as the rest of the advice for travelers remains in place. Yeah, exactly. CDC spokesperson told the Times on Tuesday, late yesterday, CDC review, review, uh, removed the mask recommendation for uh, from the monkeypox travel health notice because it caused confusion. Yeah, exactly. Don't be sharing masks with somebody who's bleeding from the eyes. 
Good advice. Thanks. Do you really need a separate section for that? I don't think so. And apparently, neither did the CDC fact checkers after the fact. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? We're trying to we're trying to cling on to the little bit of credibility we have left. And you run out there and you do this dumb shit. What the fuck are you thinking? Hopefully, that's a conversation that they had behind closed doors. But again, I'm being just maybe a little bit too hopeful. Travel health notices inform travelers and clinicians about current health issues that impact travelers' health, like disease outbreaks, special events, or gatherings in national disasters in destinations around the world. In countries where there are current monkeypox outbreaks, well, apparently it's everywhere at all times. So that's why you should know the uh, signs and symptoms. I think it's like a, a scratchy throat and uh, some. Uh, again, yeah, it's mostly denoted by the big bubbles that form on the skin. It subsides after like a week or something like that. And it's, um, unless the science has changed on this, it's not really uh, transmitted through aerosol. Again, it's been transmitted through sexual contact. Ugh, again, this is the big, this is probably the biggest nothing burger so far of 2022 that's currently being pushed by the media. Meanwhile, our other health authority that's out there the who with their big pandemic uh, global rules i've been seeing something about this and i haven't really wanted to wade too far into it because i do the the happier topics that are out there that don't really address these fucking globalists out there it's far more fulfilling and it's something that we can actually you know make use of it's actual actionable material as opposed to yeah the who is doing some fuck shit and today is also a day that ends in Y. And the sky is blue, grass is green, and the WHO is corrupt. Like, what, the fucking, what are we supposed to do with this? Okay. So now, now they're working on far-reaching amendments to the global rules after a setback. Yeah, because a whole bunch of countries out there, mostly African countries, I know that's weird, have kind of pushed back this whole uh, world treaty as opposed to... Uh, Justin Trudeau, who's very likely to get a case of monkeypox, if you know what I mean. He was the one who was out there bending over. It's like, please, more globalist dick in my tight little, well, <laughs> tight. <laughs> Don't need to finish that sentence. You already know where I was going with that. Uh, the push. <laughs> Well, literally. Uh, to further empower the World Health Organization remains a major threat to U.S. and the world's national sovereignty and self-government, even after a setback in the United Nations Agency's 75th annual uh, meeting in Geneva in late May, according to experts. Following some minor changes, the international health regulations approved at the meeting last month. The health organization and its member governments are working on new, far-reaching amendments to the global rules. Those will be submitted in September. How adorable. At this time, uh, WHO leader and member governments are also developing a new international pandemic treaty. I've peripherally heard, heard about this, sort of. I don't know any specifics, so let's see if we can find some. The looming international agreement, which is still being drafted. It's international. It's just basically globalism. So do we really need to know what's in there to already know that it's going to be fucking terrible for everybody involved? is expected to hand vast new powers to the WHO if approved. Great. Uh, the health branch, you know, the health and safety branch of the United Nations. Terrific. Wonderful. Fantastic. If you thought the WHO was corrupt, oh boy, do I have another institution for you to take a look at. Uh, the treaty and amendments being negotiated are aimed at empowering the WHO to fight global health crises such as pandemics. Oh, great. And whatever you want to call it, pandemic. Are we still currently living in one or has that ever been downgraded? Will it ever be downgraded? That's a better question. Uh, according to U.S. State Department and WHO officials, uh, however, U.S. lawmakers at the state and federal levels are pushing back hard, as they should be. Experts in international law and healthcare told The Times that the ultimate goal is to impose medical tyranny on humanity, not to protect health. Oh, potato, potato. That's fine. Don't need to think too hard about that. This is just another uh, major totalitarian power grab by the CDC. What? The WHO, Bill Gates, Big Pharma, the biowarfare industry, and the People's Republic of China. Wow, this dude is going in. I like it. And others to impose their medical tyranny upon the human race. No, but Bill Gates, just he, he loves people. He loves all people said Francis Boyle, professor of international law at the University of Illinois. Yeah, but he's not a medical expert, so what does he know? We don't need to know his opinion on this stuff. Boyle, who wrote the 1989 legislation implementing the Biological Weapons Convention, oh boy, that was unanimously approved by Congress, said the WHO power grab needs to be opposed at all costs, urging U.S. lawmakers to get involved. It's stopping it now. 
Oh, yeah, if it's all going to be drafted up by September, theoretically, it might get decided on in this Congress. They might push it through as it stands right now, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see how this all shakes out. Further in the, in the interview, Boyle called the WHO a criminal organization and completely rotten, corrupt, and despicable. All right, then. My guy's on point. He urged strongly against giving the WHO any more powers or money. I agree. There's nothing more than a front organization for pharma, the biowarfare industry, and Gates. He really hates Bill Gates, but I don't blame him. Saying it should be allowed to rot on the vine and then twist slowly, slowly in the wind and then set itself on fire and then we can all just default dance around it. That would be fun. The rest of this just kind of looks like uh, him just dunking on the WHO. But again, for the sake of brevity... Without much media fanfare, WHO members met uh, in Geneva on May 27th, or May 22nd through the 27th to discuss major changes to the international health regulations. CDC describes it IHR as legally binding. Oh yeah, cool. More like guidelines, really, than binding. Uh, the global health rules also made or played a major role in the coordinated worldwide response to the China virus pandemic. Let's see how well that worked out. So what should we do? More government regulation. Okay, I got it. The 13 amendments in the IHR uh, were proposed in January by the Biden administration. Ugh. Uh, the backing of almost 50 governments. Oh, that's great. It looks like at least at a worldwide spectrum, uh, Biden can bring some people together because he sure as fuck can't do that on his own home soil. Among other changes, the amendments would have further empowered the WHO and its director general to declare international health emergencies. What, and he's going to send in the health mil military to round up all the health criminals? Great. Actually, that's probably exactly what they'd be doing. Even without the approval of a targeted nations or government. Great. One world government. Yay. The ostensibly focused on health issues governments around the world have increasingly argued that other issues including climate change, gun violence, and racism constitute public health emergencies. You see where this is going? Everything's a health issue. Everything will affect your health if you just extrapolate it out far enough. Thank you, postmodernism. Critics point out this means almost anything would come under the purview of the WHO, which is a very carotten, uh, or carotten, which is corrupt and rotten is a portmanteau i'm just creating my own word right there institution all right lawmakers and activists across the country speak or spent weeks sounding the alarm about the amendments before they were considered last month critics referred to them as dictatorial and a power grab by the who and some of its leading members at the expense of the autonomy of nation states yeah no exactly so look forward to that in september because that'll be fun and uh, i don't know if we can look forward to joe by september but i'm sure hoping so i'm pulling for you joe hopefully there's no more stairs in your way because that was fucking embarrassing but with all of that said thank you all very much for the gift of your time i've been don consuelo I want you to follow your gut and get after it take care everyone